Hey there, viewers, and welcome to the County of Bronze Hill, a land filled to the brim with the utmost loyalty to the Empire and its ruling dynasty of emperors. Also, they're dogs, so they're simply being loyal to their owner, you could say. Their overlord, the Imperial Emperor Grover V, who looks a little sickly and is gonna die soon, but then we can unlock our focus tree. Even then, our love for the royal family will live on, I promise. But before before we get distracted with the future, it's time to think about the present and our glorious special diamond dog technologies, our great iron paw division, which I think is its own unique battalion. Yes, look at that. Still have the griffin models, but I'm not complaining. Just look at that. That's adorable. If you think anything else, then you're wrong. Look at them majestically move out of Ravensburg. But quickly, before the emperor bites the dust, we need to finish his industrial park. We will have to continue the good name of the Emperor after he falls and make sure that his legacy is not picked up by unworthy hands or unworthy talons. His legacy must be handled with the gentle paws of- I don't know, this, this is starting to sound a little weird. See, right now, Griffenheim is pretty powerful. They have a lot of their own divisions. Everybody else has more divisions than we do. So we have to build up, we have to prepare, we are very weak. and we love the Emperor so much that they own a substantial amount of our industry, so they control a lot of our trade. We have significant negative consumer goods and political power modifiers, but it's all because we love the Emperor more than anybody else does. Oh, the Emperor's best friends? Yeah, that's us. The best friends of the Emperor. Just love that little guy. And some diamond dogs have been liberated from Diamond Mountain to join us in Bronze Hill. Someday all dogs shall finally be be free. You know, we have two priorities here. Number one is our glorious emperor, and number two is liberating citizens. But number one is very important. We we do love the emperor a lot. He is the best griffin, best being, and I promise we still love Grover, but we are going to nationalize his park. It will increase communism a bit, but uh, th there's a secret third thing on the list of stuff we love here in Bronze Hill, and I'll reveal what that third thing is shortly. It has happened. Our focus tree has been unlocked, but there is much sadness in Bronze Hill. Well, actually, we, we kind of need to wait for the crisis, so I kind of lie. And now we're going to open a new university in Bronze Cruise. Get a research slot really early in the game, so we can get some very advanced, cute, special research that'll help us out later. We're also going to send our divisions around the capital to protect the Emperor, the, the young Emperor, of course. Grover, the sixth. We'll do what we can, just in case, I don't know, some crazy person might invade. Or not person, bird. Crisis in the government. The Archon, the highest religious authority in the Empire, I think, has taken over as the regent for Grover. So now we have to make very hard choices. We will finish getting that research slot and then we will decide what to do. And so now I have decided we're not gonna side with Gabriella. We're not gonna protect the Archon. We're going to go our own way with a Bronze Hill Regency. Because we could stand around Griffenheim and protect the Emperor, but I think it would be much better if we take control of Griffenheim to truly protect the Empire and the young Emperor, of course. So now we are free from the Empire. We're not a puppet of the Archon, but we still are truly committed to the Emperor. And now it's about time that we reveal the third item on the list of things we care about, and that is communism and workers and industry. And these are some creepy four-fingered hands with claws. Uh, but ignoring that, we are going to do the coalition of the left. And no, 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 this isn't one of those leftist revolutions where we have a disagreement with the emperor a few years after we take power. No, no. This is communism where we love the emperor. And we will nationalize assets, get more civilian factories. Which, no matter which path you do, I think you get those civilian factories. I guess not with the chancellor, but in this other path you still get it, just by negotiating with foreign firms. Kind of forgot, for the path we want to do today, a certain thing can't happen in the Empire, and I forgot to set the Empire so it doesn't do that certain thing. So let's hope that it doesn't happen. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then I pity you. Now we're going to march on Weissetreffen something. <laughs> I don't know where that city is, it's not the capital. 
It's maybe it's just a theoretical place that doesn't actually physically exist. Classic leftist move. Now we have two choices. We can either cast Kimball as the heart of the revolution, the only true and most powerful leader, but we're not gonna do that because he is stupid and bad. Rosie Luxembourg. She is now our new leader and will lead us to greatness in absence of an emperor, but we won't lack an emperor for long. We'll now recruit a socialist journalist to replace the silent work dog who hates communism, I guess. Now, under Rosie's guidance, we are going to get a fifth research slot to continue researching into the future. Even before we fix the food crisis, we must continue developing our industry. Well, on second thought, that does sound a little mean. We should probably fix the food crisis first. We can be the good guys for once. It's kind of nice. And there is one other communist state with in the Empire Romao, so we are going to offer them an alliance for the betterment of both our nations. United we stand. And there is not enough world tension for us to justify, so we can't intervene now. That unfortunately means the Empire will grow around 40 factories stronger, which is unfortunate, but we should still be able to beat them in the end. And tension is already high enough that we could justify, but Yale is already about to defeat to the Empire alone, well, with Katarin serving as a distraction, and we can now do our focus to get a war goal against them, which we'll do, though I may not use it, because I don't want to declare on them just for Yale to win and annex everything. That, that wouldn't be ideal. With one day left on our focus, Yale capitulated the Empire and took Griffenheim, which we're really lucky that they did that before the focus completed and not after, because now this war goal will be against Yale instead of the Empire. So we don't have to justify a separate war goal, we just automatically have the war goal. And our army is big enough that we can immediately challenge them before hopefully they can, you know, start doing decisions and messing with things. And it won't be them and Katarin versus me like the Empire. It'll be me and Romao against them, so they have no chance. Comrade and workers. Wait, never mind. I, I guess our faction disbanded. Um, so much for that entire working together thing. E either way, we'll win. Already getting encircled. We just have to keep going and hope that they don't stop us. We've taken Griffenheim, though I don't think it's a core of theirs yet, and there's nothing we can do with it yet. I would do war propaganda, but we'll probably capitulate them before the war propaganda finishes. So far, we've done pretty good. It's 8k to 38k. That's about as good as you can get when it's just infantry against infantry. If you have really good tanks, you can get 10 to 1 numbers, but that's not an option yet. Right now the game is deploy as many infantry divisions as possible so you can micro better. We didn't get a single division encircled, we took very minimal losses, and Thedesia and the Strawberry Duchy want an alliance? I don't think that makes much sense, but I'll take it and just deal with them last. This will give us extra protection in case something weird happens. An important part of the mod, every Griffin country, I believe, has the ability to form the Griffonian Empire. It doesn't matter where you are, but we aren't a Griffin nation. Luckily though, we still can just do this focus and get the cores that we need, I think. So it doesn't really matter too much in the end. Finally, having an emperor to lead the workers, it'll be perfect. I guess we can now distribute anti-imperial propaganda, what? I'll hail the emperor. Meanwhile, distribute anti-imperialist propaganda to get war support. Oh well, I need the war support. And now with our glorious emperor under our protection, we can return to putting this empire back together. We'll first start with the Ramau Accords to peacefully integrate our friend into the empire. We're ideologically the same. We just really love the emperor, whereas they're probably more of a normal communist country. And Rosie's sharing a wholesome moment with Grover. He's asking for waffles. Yes, Grover, you can have all the waffles you want. You are the emperor that is destined to protect all of the workers of all the nations of all the world. Okay, and our offer was not accepted. They, they did not agree 
even our communist friends, which is unfortunate, but not surprising. So we will do what we are forced to do. We will wait for them to move a little bit. They'll start attacking those guys, and then we can hopefully sneak into their capital. It would have been better if they agreed to join us the easy way, but that, that also works. And these two we have to fight at the same time because they're guaranteeing each other. I'm going to put a lot more divisions on this front, take them out here, and then I can move everything to this front and take them out there. Here they have this defensive river, but we owned this tile here so we could just attack into there. And time for one last battle. This one should be a lot like the other one where we had to fight two guys at once, hopefully. This line should hold decently, and then they're low on supply here, so we should be able to break them, even though they're in hills and forests mostly. And yeah, no one accepted any of our offers to rejoin the empire and these guys didn't accept the called arms so i'm going to send more divisions over and we took their one supply hub on the border so now their supply situation should get even worse <laughs> Okay, and one to go, and I was being stupid too. It was really good that I accepted that alliance because Phthegia is guaranteeing me, and if you're guaranteeing two countries and one declares on the other, you stay neutral. So since they were guaranteeing both of us, they stayed neutral. I just kind of forgot that I had accepted the alliance, and we've encircled half of Phthegia's army, so this battle is already over. And the Empire has been put back together at last. So we will proclaim that the Griffoni Imperial Federation is back. We will begin integrating Phthegia. Luckily, the Griffonian Republic hasn't yet conquered the Kingdom of Vadina, and the Northern Tribes is just independent, which is good. So yeah, we're pretty well off. The River Coalition is split up, which is also very good. See, and now it's time we go to liberate all of the Diamond Dogs and Diamond Mountain. We'll take some volunteers from Prywin, our good friend to the south. We're, we're, we're great friends. We love each other. Also, I think after all this time, Time, we finally have enough war support to go into war economy. We haven't been on war economy the entire game. And now we'll train 20 new tank divisions and 25 new infantry divisions, and then we will be ready for our great battle with Aquilia and the Griffonian Republic. Meanwhile, though, while we wait, I'm going to send some help over to the countries that they're trying to take over, make this a little more difficult for them. Yeah, see, these four divisions will be very useful. We will start encircling them, with our 40 planes, we're able to get air superiority too, so that will also make this miserable for the Republic. And they naval invaded, they were so smart, but then we took the port. Unfortunately, they only have to move one tile there and then they connect back to their main forces, but I still find it a little funny. Okay, so I've been patient. I've spent years building up the supply system because we had an amazing army. We have amazing manpower reserves and tons of tanks and other variations of equipment, but we did not have good supply, so now all the railways are level 5. We have tons of supply hubs across all of our fronts. We'll have to, of course, build up the railways once we push in, so let's begin. Hopefully this works. There we go. The Aquilian Republic merged the factions, and things are going very well, at least for now. Okay, and we've spent the last few, or maybe like four or five years, restoring some parts of the Empire, but mostly just chilling. And now the coronation of Emperor Grover the Sixth at long last. The Emperor is back. Comrade Emperor Grover the Sixth, the chosen by the gods to lead the workers to victory. Anyways, this has been fun, and I will see you all next time.